Hello everyone, this is Andy Collie here, Mr. A Collie on Twitter, or Andy at learningdust.com on the email, and I'm just here to talk to you a little bit about my intro to Python scheme of work for Replit. So if you like what you see whilst you're doing this, please tag me in on Twitter and also tag in Replit, that's their handle, and Compact School, which is computing at school. Because it you know, just gives me a bit of a boost with them as well. They might ask me to do a bit more for them. Um, whilst I am here, my co-host of the Learning Dust podcast would be aghast if I didn't take this opportunity to plug the podcast. So this is us. We're at, at Learning Dust on Twitter or at learningdust.com. Um, and we're into season two now. So you can listen back to a good dozen or so episodes of us talking to people about ed tech, about working relationships and using tech in education. So without further ado, Let's move on with the session. First of all, we're going to look at this question. What is Replit? Well, the web address is repl.it. And when you create an account, which you can do for free, it looks like this. This is my free account. And Replit is essentially a coding website. You can create and write programs in a variety of languages on the web. So what I've got here is the home page. I also have um, my folder structure for all my, what they call REPLs, which are my individual programs. You can see here, I've got some for the introduction to Python program I'm going to talk about today. I've also got some unnamed ones there. So if we go into that, in fact, what we'll do, we'll go back to here and we'll start a new one. So let's call, let's press the plus up here to start a new REPL. You choose the language you want. I'm going to choose Python. You give it a name, for example, REPL, like so, and you create, and you get this interface. Now, for the purposes of this session, we're not going to bother with any of these other icons down the left-hand side. We're just going to go straight into files. Um, this is my Python coding window. This is where I write my code and add my comments, and when I press run, this is my console where I see the results of my code. So oh, let's just type some. There we go. Type some very simple Python code. I can add a comment. Like so, and when I run it, I'll see the results over here in the console. So you can do all this for free. And if you're thinking of using this with your students, you can get them to sign up and start creating code just like this. Um, so that's what Replit is. It's available across multiple platforms, across multiple languages. And that's a very quick overview. And I'll just go back to the home page. It's a very quick example of how you can create a quick program in there. Now. You might have noticed that I had to press the back button quite a bit there. One of the things that's really useful with with um, Replit, especially if you are using a Windows PC, is control and left click because it opens your links in new tabs. Otherwise, you end up with a million of tabs. Otherwise, you end up having to go back back all the time. So if we go to my Repls and I want to open that example one, open link in new tab, and there you go. And I've still got my folder structure here. That to me as a teacher is really quite useful. Um, and that was the interface. And so there's the Replit website. But the next question we're going to look at is, what is Intro to Python? Well, this is the scheme of work that I created with Replit and for Replit that they made available for free through their website. And so Intro to Python, here we go. This is the one docs.replit curriculum intro python i will put all the links in the uh, comments underneath this video uh, in the description so this tells you about the course this is the full curriculum i've broken it down into six sections and this is a curriculum that is aimed at absolute beginners learning how to pro uh, program python but I've also built in there um, documents and reference points and explainer videos for absolute beginner teachers who are teaching Python for the first time as well, just like I was a few years ago. So whether you are an experienced teacher or a brand new teacher, there's something in this for you. So what you can do when you click each of 
these links or you can click here to access the whole course it will take you to a google drive link like this you've got a readme here with an overview of the whole course and then for each of the individual sessions if you go into those folders you'll see you've got a readme document there some slides that you can use in class or take and adapt and an explainer video um, if you're a new teacher and you think, I wonder how I do that, I wonder how I, I, I make that happen, you can watch the video. It's just me talking through some of the basic concepts. So as a teacher, your first place to start is here with the README. And this document explains to you what the, the concepts and the theory behind outputs, variables, and inputs, gives you some other useful links. And down here, we start to, we start to spell out explicitly the concepts we're trying to teach and trying to deliver in this scheme of work after that you have exercises lesson tasks that you can use in lesson so each link is a link to a REPL that i've created on replit that you can use with your students and the next link is an example solution not all the um when you get more advanced students will create their own individual solutions they'll all work in different ways but you've got at least you've got an example one there as a point of reference so if you're a student well let's look at this from three ways you can say okay i like the i like the course but i don't want to use replit that's fine open the REPL, copy the code use it in whatever platform you see available the only thing we'd ask is please this is creative commons attribution and non-commercial please don't sell the stuff on and please give myself mr a collie and replic credit when you use it um, so you take the code and you use it on your platform the next thing to think is well i want to use the free replic account that's fine take the link put it in google classroom put it in OneNote, put it in however you share the, share it with your students. And what they can do is they can click on that link. So let's go to the output task. Here we go. They can click on that link. Now this is my master version, but what students can do and what you can do if you want to create your own and adapt it is you can drop this down here and you can choose fork. That creates you your own individual copy of this REPL that you can then work on individually. You won't edit my master. And once the, once the students are done, they can basically go to share and choose copy REPL link. They can copy their link and send it back to you on OneNote on Google Classroom, however they want. So that's how to use it for free. Now, whilst we're on an assignment, the next thing I'm going to explain to you is this. the way I've formatted and the pedagogy behind how I've created the resources. It's based around some, uh, some research around education, especially this, um, this idea of have they learned what I'm trying to teach them, which is the toughest thing I find to assess when I'm in class. So to maximize my chances of the message sent being the message received, I've looked at the research from Rosenshine's principles instruction, which is effectively these five points here. We're going to present our material using small steps. We're going to provide models. We're going to provide scaffolds for difficult tasks. We're going to ask questions and we're going to check for student understanding. And this links really well into a programming pedagogy from Sue Sentence called PRIM, which is predict, run, investigate, modify, and make. So if we just go to full screen on here, this is a fantastic document that, again, I will link to in the content, contents about PRIM and how to use it in your classroom. I only found it the other day, um, and it's brilliant, so I'll put another link to that in there. But you've got that Rosenshine principles of you giving worked examples to introduce the content in small steps, reinforcing that with another worked example, going to a partially worked example for students to finish off, giving them a cued start to complete, and then giving them a task to do on their own. And that maps across to Prim a bit like this. These predict, run, investigate, modify, make stages can be roughly compared to the state of the five stages above. And if you want to simplify it for the students, or you think, well, I want to explain to someone else, then 
we're starting to move in this direction from not my code at all to partly my code to all my code and all my own work. So that's the pedagogy behind it. So if we have a look at that REPL again, you will see that it is split into predict and run. Here is a line of code and this is output. So we're doing some really basic code because this is the first lesson in the first task in the first lesson. Students are going to add a line of comment, add a comment above the line print to predict what the code will do. Then we've got investigate, which asks some questions of um, the, the student, for the students to answer of the code. They can comment them in here or you can set it up so they answer the questions on a Google Classroom doc or whatever, however you want it. We've got to modify, reuse the code to output your own message. So the students are taking that code and just changing it a bit. And then we've got a make task, which is output a joke on multiple lines. Now this is quite a simplistic one, but if we start to look at other examples, let's see where we've got, I've got a selection one kicking around somewhere. That's, a, let's have a look at that. Selection, let's go to the readme to find the link. Here we go, task selection, there we are. So let's have a look at this one. Let's pause while the loading happens. Okay. Task one, add comments. There's your predict and run. Task two, edit the program below so it works properly. There's your modify. I need to add some more questions in there to do the investigate. Um, and then task three is make, which is create your own program using that skill. So I'm trying to reuse that prim methodology again and again and again and again. So students get used to the format and they are showing their understanding of the code and I can check it much more systematically. Now, if you're fine using this Replit for free, then this is the way to do it. However, there is another let me just close down a few of these. There is another way to use Replit and they've just released this feature. It's called Teams. Now with Teams, you can create a team and well, let's have a look. If you go with education, $35 a month, unlimited students. So that works out at $350, um, $350 a year actually because you get two months free if you pay annually. Um, and so what I've done is I've already created a team here. Let me go back to this. I've created a team. Here it is. Replit, by the way, are offering teams for free for teachers for until I think Christmas or so. So if you, um, if I'll put a link to the form to apply for that in the description. Here we go. And what I've done is I've created a demo activity and I've shared it with people in my team and they have forked it to have a look at their own, to, um, to create their own code. So what I can do as a teacher is I can go into each one of these. Let's pick one of my colleagues. Here we go. Mrs. Thorpe. You're a YouTube star now, Mrs. Thorpe. Here we go. This is her um, work. So she'll have done her work on here. And you might see that one bit of it is pink because one of the great features on um, Replit is that if I highlight a section of code like that, I can annotate and I've already done it here and you get little inline comments like that. So you can highlight the code and leave your comments and the students can respond to that. Once students, um, once students have uh, completed their work, they can submit it to you and you can see which, which ones have been submitted and unsubmitted here. Here we go. You can see which ones have been submitted and unsubmitted. Uh, and so you can go in and mark the ones that are submitted. Now, I'm, in con I'm communicating with Replit at the moment. At the time of recording, the thing I'm asking them for is the ability to, as a school to subscribe for a certain number of students, but then to be able to subdivide that into teams that match my classes and assign different teachers to different teams. And I'd also like to be able to create a, a resource repository. So, what that means is when I want to create an assignment for my team, I create a template that just makes me a new REPL. Let's go just like we did before. 
example task, make me a new REPL, like this. Up we go. And I put my code in there, and you can copy and paste from the exercises I did before. Um, put my code in there. And then what I can do is I can publish it and it becomes available to everyone in that team. I'm asking Replit if they will let us create these and keep them as templates and then distribute them out to various teams. Because I'd like to create, like for example, all my year eight code as, a, as individual assignments and then send them to all my different year eight classes. I think I've got two or three this year. So I'd like to send that one assignment to three different classes and have all those students in their own section so I can see who in which class has... Um, completed the activity, I can mark the classes separately and so on. So that's what I'm asking Replit for at the moment. But what you've got there is you've got Teams, which you pay for. You've got just using the links, which is free, or you've got grabbing the code and using it with your own platform, which is not to do with Replit at all. You can use it with whatever your school prefers to use. So there you have it, a complete scheme of work, introduction to Python, across six sessions, which will take you at least six weeks. Um, and you may have got a sneaky cheat, sneak preview there. If I go to there, I'm already working on the intermediate one for Replit, and that hopefully will be out towards the end of October, if not early November. So folks, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any question at all, ping me on Twitter, Mr. A. Collie, or email me at andy at learningdust.com. And I'll see you soon. Take care.